Bismillah, alhamdulillah, peace be with you. Welcome to the Dean Show. What's the purpose of life? What's it all about? What are we doing on this planet? That's the theme of this talk show. And we bring on people who found their way in life. People who have been really contemplating and thinking about these really important questions. So we've got one of those, we're going to call him an original American, Anglo-Saxon, Irish background. He's here on the Dean Show. My brother and your brother, Phil. We also got some celebrity news for you, Oscar De La Hoya, and some of the other famous celebrities. We'll be talking about them here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with this exciting episode. This is The Dean, The Dean This is The Dean, The Dean This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum as How are you, Philip? Alhamdulillah. Philip or Philly? Philly, Phil, Philip. I've been called it all. I've been called it all, man. All right, great, great. Yeah. And now you call the original American Anglo-Saxon. Yeah. Well, you yes, <laughs> you have been the first to term me the Anglo-Saxon <laughs> American. But yeah. So your yeah, family yeah. goes all the way back to the May. The, what's that called? The I think the Mayflower and the, the Pilgrims that came off. Yeah. So uh, yeah, supposedly. My grandfather did the family tree a long time ago, and supposedly goes back all the way to uh, Mayflower, so we got Plymouth an, Rock, all that type of stuff. We got an original American here on the <laughs> Dean Show, and also your mother is Irish. Yes. What part of our, do you have you been back there? I have not been to Ireland. I have not. Okay, so now you became a Muslim. I did. You found your way in life, purpose of life. You ask those tough questions to yourself subconsciously. You're just thinking, you know, pondering. So we're going to go a little bit way back in history. Yeah. Talk about a little bit of your past. We sure. Uh, tell us a little about yourself. Um, well, I grew up in Massachusetts, so I am a Red Sox fan, Patriots fan. We kind of have to, you know, have to be those fans. Uh, I grew up in Massachusetts, went to high school in North Andover, Mass. Uh, ended up at Colorado State University. And at that time, uh, if we want to get, you know, cut to the subject real quick about how I became Muslim... I remember towards the end of my college career really battling with, you know, why are we here? Um, or why am I even, like, on campus at this time? Why am I even in college? And most of that comes from, uh, we're, we're, and I would say 80 to 90% of the college students nowadays are in college because they have to be. Like, if you're not, if you don't go to college after high school, you're almost, like, deemed, like, a loser or, like, you weren't smart enough or whatever it is. And, um and I think a lot of the college kids go to college because they have to. And obviously, you know, and we spend a lot of money going to college. Even. And I'm walking across campus thinking about why I'm, you know, why am I here? And I'm here, if I, if I don't go to college, then I'm not, I guess, good enough. And now that I'm in college, why am I in college? I have to go to college to get a degree. If I don't get a college degree, I can't buy a car or make payments on a car or I can't get a job to make payments on a car, I can't buy a house, I can't have a family, and you have this kind of reasoning for being in college that's maybe the typical undeclared, you know, undeclared major college, because that was me. Um, so I think subconsciously that can eat away at people, um, and you have kind of this like shallow reason for being in college, and when you have that, you cram for tests, you do what it takes to get through, and then what do you do on the weekend? You go party with your friends. You have a good time. A lot of times those people get into trouble. And in reality, I think that starts to wear down on you. And at least it was wearing down on me because it's really not a real healthy, high character, high value way of existence. Mm -hmm. um, so at that time, uh, I remember having to take a free elective in college, and I remember opening up the course catalog my junior year and pointing down at a course, just kind of like, you know, like abacadabra, I'm going to take that course. And the course was Muhammad and the Origins of Islam. Muhammad and the Origins of Islam. Right. So, you know, the first homework assignment, 
you know, non-Muslim teacher, just kind of like a, an expert, I guess, on the Middle East, medieval Middle East, modern Middle East. Um, first homework assignment was read Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the longest chapter in the Quran. So I read that Surah. Um, I had to read uh, some other, you know, like, like kind of like a piece of paper, or maybe his senior thesis or something on the difference between Sunni and Shia Muslims. Uh, but regardless, I, I started reading uh, the Quran at that point. And I, I could probably talk a lot about um, where it kind of led from there. Um, but let's just put it this way. A lot of my, uh, what I was thinking about life and my direction, where I needed to go, uh, was quickly pointed in what I thought was the right direction. Regardless of whether I thought the world existed in a certain way or however it was, uh, all of a sudden right in front of me was how, what I believe is how the world really is. Now... Did you did you start to when you when you opened up the Quran and you started reading it? Did you did you the things that the message that was being portrayed? couple couple things did, happened real quick. I think a right away when you open up the Quran, it very clearly says, "Do not say Jesus is the Son of God." And as a Christian boy growing up, and I was a I would say liberal Christian boy because I believed like a lot of kind of westernized thought that, you know, I can come to God on my own terms as long as I'm a good person, I don't do anything wrong to anyone, um, it's all good, we're all going to go to heaven, right? And that can be very misleading, you know, because you can think that you're doing the right thing and you're good, and as long as I do this, you're fine, but uh, as you start to read the Quran, you find out very quickly the Quran's a lot about the community. It's not just about yourself, it's not just about one person, and it's really about what do we need to do as a community that's really the greater good. Um, and that's kind of just a dive, you know, side topic. But Jesus not being the Son of God for a Christian boy, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest piece I mean, that people, you have to wrestle do, with. Do, do people really even think, you know, what does that actually mean? When they talk about Son of God, people are programmed and they just keep saying Son yeah. of God, Son of God. But if you... If yeah, and then even in the Quran it says, you know, people, it talks a lot about being a product of just where you were born and where you grew up. I mean, we yeah. know that... Following your forefathers. Yeah, following exactly. Following people who were ignorant, who didn't know, and then they passed And I'm on reading it. that, and I'm saying, yeah, I am, I'm, I am a product of where I grew up. I mean, like even something like racism, that's a product of society. That's something that you grew up, when you came out of your mother's womb, you're pure, you're this little perfect baby. And then as you get older, society starts impressing values upon you. And that's where you get that junk mm -hmm. from. Yeah. Um, so I, it very quickly became me wanting to get Jesus right. And I think I'm Muslim today because I got Jesus right. And what do you believe about Jesus now? I believe Jesus was a prophet. I believe he was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe that he rose people from the dead, whether that was Lazarus or not. I know that he prayed to God and he said, God, raise this man from the dead. By the permission of God. By the permission of God, by praying to God. By yeah. praying to the Almighty, yeah. the All-Powerful. It yeah. just needed to say, be and it was, That's and he it. was, and the Mother Mary. Yeah. And that um, makes sense. That makes sense, doesn't it? It makes sense to me. I mean, it makes sense to a lot of people who really just use their common sense. Yeah, and he healed the blind. And, you know, and then there are some other things that you learn about Jesus from reading the Quran that, um, you know, you may not know. Like, he spoke from the crib as a baby, and he mm -hmm. defended, you know, Mary's chastity. Yeah. So when, pe when you read this, I mean, it's not... It's beautiful that you see that, you know, Jesus and his mother are held at such a high regard. You know, there's a, many people don't know, our, our brothers in humanity, that there's a chapter in the Quran, the verbatim word of God, that's named after Jesus' blessed mother. Mary. And Miriam, you can, and you can actually go to the hell fire if you don't believe in Jesus as a Muslim. Is that right now? Did you learn that? If you uh, say, I deny Jesus, yes. I don't believe that he did miracles. I don't believe he was a messenger. Or Moses, or, or Aaron, Moses, or, or Abraham, or Ishmael, or deep. Isaac. That's deep. Yeah, man. <laughs> it is. It so, is, man. but did you find out anywhere because of Christian? We got you know a lot of Christians out there, our, our brothers in humanity, who we want the best for, we want the best for everybody. You know, they'll say that look, he said he was God. You know, if you don't believe in him, that you're going to the hellfire. You weren't filled with the Holy Ghost. Have you heard people yes, come to yes, you? Yes, 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 absolutely. And during the time, I remember a guy saying that he spoke in tongues and that he received, you know, you know, maybe the. Eucharist of Christ or whatever it was he said um, but no absolutely and I guess my question to everyone else would be is what did Jesus really say and what's your proof mm -hmm. because I studied I, I became very addicted and I really studied I really wanted to get Jesus right so I really was studying where did the gospel get changed if you study the medieval 
Middle East, you study medieval Christianity and you see the power struggle and you see how, I don't, you know, like where did, where did monks and priests and priests not being able to get married, where did that all come from? Mm -hmm. Did Jesus say there shall be monks and don't get married? No. Are you sure? I mean, I don't know. That was my question, right? I wanted to know, like, yeah, why are there monasteries? And why are there monks out there? And why are they not able to get married? Because I don't remember Jesus ever saying that. But, you know, and that's just one little tidbit or question, so... So the fact is that Jesus, peace be upon him, never claimed he was God. Did you find that about, out? That was clear. He never, ever explicitly, unequivocally, clearly, lucidly ever said, I'm God, worship me. This is a, a statement that if he was God or the literal son of God, he would have had to have made saying, I came to die for your sins. Did you ever find that in your, vest, in your investigation looking for the truth? Uh, no, I did not. And I believe that that can be arguably be so from the Bible as well. I believe that Jesus, even in the Bible, didn't say, I am God, worship me. And people argue with that. We can go back to John, and that's a much longer discussion. Um, okay. And that comes through translation and all kinds of okay. things. Okay, so we believe that he was a mighty messenger of God, that he called people to worship the Creator, not the creation. We'll be right back with more of Phil's story here on The Dean Show. Thank you. If you have a Facebook, guys, I never ask a man for help. I ask a lot. Have a Facebook. Make sure you like our statuses. And think about death so I stay in a surat. You never know. That one person that you shared one of our videos to. And when no one's looking, you sneak and give zakat. You never know. That person might change and end up becoming Muslim. And then you reap the rewards of everything that person have learned, has learned from your share. You rush to work, but you're late for salat. A Muslim never brags, but his actions say a lot. Like us on uh, like Facebook, us, Twitter, and follow us on Twitter. And one last thing. You want peace of the prophet, but not peace for the prophet. See, that money is your Lord, so you worship an object. Go subscribe. If you have a YouTube, subscribe. Oh, Kitab or Quran, you learn words to a song. Subscribe right now. Hypnotized by a thong. You ain't watching for shaitan. You watch the weight you put on. Good. Well, do it. <laughs> Got my head on the ground and my knees on the floor and the devil on my air, Eddie, telling me to trade it for the world. Do it right now. Don't, don't say tomorrow. Do it now. Islam is the truth. And that's no ands, if buts, and maybes. Back here on The Dean Show with Phil. Gave you a little nickname, the original Anglo-Saxon. Yeah. <laughs> Your family goes all the way back to the... Mayflower, supposedly, Mayflower, maybe. at least a long but ways you got back. Some, you got some Irish blood in you, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A long so ways back. It goes a long we, ways we back. We were going to do some cele celebrity news. I mean, yeah. have you heard of this Irish actor, Liam Neeson? What is the meaning, the purpose of your life, you think? The purpose of my life? Yes. Yes, I have, Have you actually. heard of him? I'm a, He's... I'm a fan of his movie, Taken. Uh -huh. Taken 2, I like it, yeah. Liam Neeson in the UK Sun newspapers reported that he said uh, that I'm, I'm thinking of contemplating becoming, I'm thinking about becoming a Muslim. You know, he went to Turkey to film some show. You know yeah. the story? Yeah, Taken 2. So he actually, while he was in, and I heard this, it's interesting you bring that up because he was um, in Turkey filming Taken 2 and I saw the movie and it's very, you know, kind of like typical, like there's terrorists in the movie and, you know, they probably say like Allahu Akbar or somewhere in the movie, which really just means God is great. <laughs> And, and he's the actor battling the terrorists, right? And this is all going on in the movie. It is, I mean, it's a good movie, but it's, you know, embellished with the... It, I don't think it sheds really a great light on Muslims, um, like most of the movies that do that. Um, what's interesting is off the scenes, he's contemplating becoming Muslim because he's in a Muslim country and he's seeing the beauty and the peace of everything around him. You know, I remember him saying he heard the call to prayer and he's seeing people going back and forth to pray, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't remember exactly a lot, you know, a lot of God knows best what exactly he said, but I remember reading that that was one of the key things that he saw that brought peace to him. The question and he's talking about peace, right? Yes. He's talking about peace, and we say Islam means peace, and people are always saying, Why, what do you mean Islam means peace, or, you know, or like, where does that come from, right? But here's an example of a person that actually felt that. He felt that. Now, yeah, from hearing the call to prayer, the, yeah. the, the, he was saying first it was starting, it was annoying him in the beginning, but after a little bit of time, he started to feel that solace. Yeah. And he was one, he, was, he started to ask questions that many, all of us should be asking, what's it all about? You know, what are we doing on this planet? Why are we here? Mm -hmm. And did those thoughts ever go through your mind before you accepted Islam? Uh, absolutely they did. Um, because... Like most kids at the time, I was trying to figure out why I was here. What am I going to do for life? And am I doing it for me? Am I doing it for someone else? And even if you are doing it for you, that can wear thin after a time. Uh, and once you realize that really the purpose of us being here is to worship God and to do His service, mm 
Um, and I don't think anyone will disagree look, look, with the that. Cri the, the Christian or someone else from another world say, well, that's the same thing that we believe, that we're here to you know, worship God. We're worshiping God. Always a tough question. So why don't you just stay a Christian? Well, we got to get it right, mm -hmm. right? If, yeah. if, God, if God doesn't approve of what we're doing, uh, regardless of what we really think, if we're doing it wrong, and, and I don't think Christians will disagree with it, anyone can get into heaven without the forgiveness of God. And mm -hmm. even, even Muhammad, so some peace and prayers be upon him himself, knew that. Yeah, I, 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 I tell, um, I, I, go ahead, please continue. So, I mean, it's important to get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, even in, in, but at the same time, even Muslims will say you're judged on your intention, mm -hmm. right? Um, so my intention was to get it right. Yeah. And I want to worship God the way that makes him the most happiest. And not even say him, say Allah, because we don't want to say him because he's not a man, he's not a woman. Mm -hmm. Has no gender. Yeah, there's no, about... man, there's no God was created in his image. Created in his image means Adam. Mm -hmm. Yes. So t it. tell us now. You know, this concept, obviously, of Trinity, it just beguiles a lot of people. It's confusing. You know, God is one in three, three in one. And I mean, no one just no one ever took the uh, water, ice and gas, vapor or something like that. Have, that's have how they come to you with that? Yeah. yeah no, absolutely. Uh -huh. um, no, it doesn't make sense to me. And I think even at the Council of Constantine and, you know, the Great Schism. And if you study that back in history, you know that the Trinity was officially made a law back mm -hmm. then. Um and, but, and I think people got confused. I think people got confused, you know, um, uh, because Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right? So who's the Father? Well, God, our Father who art in heaven. Do you disagree with our Father who art in heaven? Not at all. Okay. Uh, we're talking uh, about the Creator. That's, that, yeah, a creator, that's right? a law. Exactly. Yes. Um, Holy Ghost. Well, Muslims would refer to the Holy Ghost as Jibreel or Gabriel or the Archangel who came down to Mary and told her that she would be pregnant. And that she would have had not slept with any man. Okay, so Holy Ghost. Um, sun, I don't, you know, it really depends on where you're going to go there with the sun piece. But um, isn't there, it, we're definitely Jesus is not the sun, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It, um, there's it, no son of God. There's no dividing God. There's no oh. divide. All he needs to do is say is be and it is. There's no. Yeah. Um, the, look, when you were studying now, let's, let's just uh, give a live example. I got three Bibles here, okay? You got oh, yeah. the, the Duray version. It's the Catholic yeah. This has 73 books. That one's a little books. thicker. It's a little thicker, okay? Yeah. Then you have the King James version, okay? Right, right. In every hotel room, you can find one of these. This is. Yeah. Did you ever have one of these? Did you, know, did you read some? some? Uh, yep, I've yeah. seen that one. Okay, and this is the in 1952, the RSV. Now, just to make a note, this has 66 books. So the point I want to drive home is if you open this book, now yeah. this goes back to. Can I look at this one? Yes, please. Okay. If I want you to, I want you just for our viewing audience here. If you could just open, open up. The Pentateuch. Right uh, here. Uh, no, uh, no, okay. just right here. I want you to when you were when you started to study the Quran, and you see that there are, aren't countless versions of the Quran. If you study the Bible, for instance, this has seventy three books. I don't want to dwell on this too much. This has sixty six books. So you have seven whole books that were thrown out. So that constitutes a different version. And then this one that I just gave you, this RSV, if you read right here, it says that the King James Version has what? Grave defects. Grave defects. That's A. That's like you buying a car, and a, you've got a recall for like 20 defects on the car or plus. Did you notice that now when you started to study into it? But then when you look at the Quran, for instance, God's Word can't have defects in it, can it? If it is literally God's Word. Yes. It cannot have defects. I mean, but this was written by men. We yes. know that this is a collection, right? Even if you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel according to. According to. Right? Um, the, the thing about the Quran, and the biggest, and, and you know, I'll leave you with this, is the biggest thing for me is, if the Quran is exactly what it says it is, and this doesn't matter whether you're Muslim or not, if the Quran is what it says it is, the Quran is literally the word of God delivered via Gabriel to Muhammad, who was an unlettered man who couldn't read or write, right? And he was just told to recite, right? That was the first thing, right? First thing he was told, Absolutely, recite, yes. right? Um, so if it is literally the word of God, then that's pretty important to me. And, and before I became Muslim, I said, if this is the word of God, then I'm going to follow it because I'd be stupid not to. But if it's any other thing, I don't care if it's a good book, I don't care if it's like a good message. I don't care if it's really close to the Bible. I don't care if it makes your life, you live the best life at all. If it's anything other than exactly what it claims it is, which is the literal word of God, then it's unacceptable to me. Unacceptable. Yes. 
And many people don't know that, that things from, from these books, they've been added, they've been adulterated. It, you can't, I mean... But there is good in that there book, is. and there is truth in that there book. There is. In, you're talking about the Bible. Yes, because we, believe, yes, we, we, have know, that, we yeah. know that the gospel was brought. Muslims believe in the gospel. We believe in the Angel, the original. Yes, So yes, what yes. was given to Moses in its original was given to Jesus. Yes. We believe in these things. There's even parts in the Bible, I think it's Deuteronomy 18, verse 10, or something like that, where it's, I mean... Muhammad is in the Bible. 18, uh, Deuteronomy 18, 18, yes. It talks about uh, the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But yeah, the book's been changed, so we got to put it to the side with all due respect. There yeah. is some of the Word of God in here, but there are also anonymous books we don't even know. But with the Quran, you found that it's not like that. If you have a perfect message from God, what else do you need? you got to accept it, brother. Yeah. That's, so that's, I mean, that's, like, if there was one message that I had to send to anyone, it would be read the Quran and find out for yourself. That's right. We got some, uh, some, some more celebrity news to talk about. Yeah. We got to finish up your story. Yeah. So we're going to take a break. Sure. And God willing, we'll be Inshallah. right back. Inshallah. Sit right tight. We'll be right back with Philly Phil, the original <laughs> Anglo-Saxon here on The Dean Show. I'm so tired. When I read through the Old Testament and the New Testament, it didn't make any sense. Feels like I've walked. A thousand miles My allies The one Back here on the Dean Show With my brother, your brother, Phil We just met, I don't really know anything about you I'm learning what they're learning today yeah. Your story is very interesting That's why we had to have you on the Dean Show And we talked about a little bit about your past the time is short, so we're kind of getting a condensed version of your story. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring people up to speed on some current celebrity news yeah. and put it in because it goes with the theme of this talk show and your story, too. I'm sure you can connect it to. Sure. I mean, so the, the things we want to bring some people up to, to par on uh, is, um, you know, amongst the celebrities, mm -hmm. amongst the people that people look at, too, for guidance a lot of the times because they're looking at their style you know what they're doing in life their twitter they're trying accounts. to find the dream we're exactly. all trying to live the dream man. exactly but you know a few of them just recent this this is happening you know uh, on a steady basis you got for instance um the disney star i don't know if you ever heard of jet jackson uh no. was really famous he's a D disney he was a 29 okay. years old suicide by gunshot oh man very rich very famous and next on the list you have the Gia Ailman, she's a reality TV star, Kay. hung herself at the age of 29. Right. And let's go into our next and last, and we'll, bring, we'll, we'll get back into your story, celebrity let's news, what's going on, Oscar De La Hoya. Now, you got to know Oscar De La yeah, Hoya. Yeah, I've heard of that guy. He plays basketball, right? No, he's a big-time <laughs> boss, boxer. Joking. He's the promoter that's promoting the Floyd Mayweather fight. He's Golden Boy Productions. Mm. He actually he admitted himself into a, into a rehab. And he was also, we talked about a few people that committed suicide. He was, atten he, was uh, he admitted that he had thoughts contemplating suicide, admitted he's an alcoholic, on cocaine. This guy's worth $175 million. Mm. He, he got paid $52 million plus endorsements to fight mm. Floyd Money Mayweather, who we did a show on to invite him to Islam. He's 39 years old. Do you feel that, it, that now, you know, you have this peace? That obviously, for a person to hang themselves, put a gun to their head, to be on coke, dope, alcohol, they obviously don't have peace. And that's something money can't buy. Do you feel that you have some no, crisis clearly, right now? Clearly, money can't buy uh, happiness. And th that's what people are trying to do. They're trying to find some sort of happiness or escape the shallow reality that, they, that we are sometimes just lacking of accepting or really understanding or just even waking up. I mean, we're walking around in a dream state half the time. I can tell you that the last week you don't remember, I mean, how many days and moments of time do we remember last week, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we really need to put purpose to our life and people are trying to search purpose and a lot of times they escape that or they escape their lack of purpose mm -hmm. um, by doing drugs yeah. and all this other stuff, right? For, for right now, what you have, if someone was to say, look, I'll give you that hundred seventy-five million. You couldn't pay me anything, man. I already, I've already won the <laughs> mega bucks, billion bucks, trillion bucks, whatever it is. If you gave me the entire uh, well, United States debt, dude, I'm like one in. There's, you can't one in a billion, man. I don't even. I feel so lucky. 
I'm so happy to have what I have. I mean, it's so, I know that I'm lucky. I know that what I have is so rare. It is, it is very rare that, you know, like you said, Anglo-Saxon, whatever, typical American white boy that grows up and has everything, becomes Muslim, you know, marries another girl, has six children, everything, and you couldn't take it away from me. And, and I honestly believe this. When I first became Muslim, a lot of people were like, what was some of the things that attracted you to Islam? And what about the typical Muslim story? I was like, honestly, if you drop me from a helicopter anywhere in the world in a parachute and I just start going door to door and shaking people's hands and saying, Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum, I would eventually find a Muslim who would put their arms around me, drag me into their house and feed me till I couldn't eat anymore. <laughs> and we're not even supposed to eat a lot of food. We're only yeah. supposed to eat till, you know, we're not supposed to stuff ourselves yeah. and go crazy and gorge ourselves. But that would happen. Um, so, no, man, I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I've seen, po I've seen poverty that, you know, just from going on Hajj and being over in Saudi and, and stuff like that, I've seen poverty that's lower poverty than we see. And I see poverty in the United States that's depression. And I see poverty in other countries where I've seen this person is the poorest person in the world. And you talk with them, they got a big smile on their mm -hmm. face. We got we, we, a couple more questions. Yeah. We're, signaling we're almost out of time. Uh, two, two points for the people that, that tuned in. And they're they're listening, and they're like they need peace. They're contemplating purpose of life. Some are even contemplating suicide. But now they tuned in, mm -hmm. and and you know they realize you know they might have had a lot of money, they lost it, or they still have the money. They're not happy. Maybe De La Hoya is watching. Oscar De La Hoya. It's possible. Man. It's possible. You never know nowadays. And 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 now they want what you have. But they got some of these doubts in their back of the head because why? If this is the truth, why is Islam always being maligned, being made to look like the terrorist religion? Oh, why is man. the media find always out for yourself, it? man? Like you said, the media, and I heard you say this before, like or somebody said this on your show. The media is a, a business, right? You gotta if it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> yeah. um, so you gotta find out for yourself. You gotta read the you gotta read the Quran. It is literally the word of God, and I'll tell you, it answers all your questions. It does, yeah. and you gotta think about it. It's not about you. It's not about. It's about serving God, and when you. The one thing that I've noticed a lot is when you're more selfless and you realize that you're serving other people and you're serving a higher power, very quickly your problems become very minuscule. Very minuscule. Very minuscule. I mean, like, forget the four celebrities. How about the 1,500 people that just got gassed in Syria? Mm -hmm. Or how about the couple thousand people and anyone that has children out there and you got little children? Can you imagine coming home to that? Serve that. Serve a higher purpose. You know what I mean? Um, and that'll quickly make all your problems seem very small. Absolutely. I wish we had more time. We gotta yeah, go. Man. Peace be with you. Wa alaikum wa salam. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you. May Allah bless it. And we, we certainly expected the angels here in this gathering and that Allah has blessed it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Now you could be similar to Oscar De La Hoya. Many of us won't. We won't have that type of money. Hundreds of millions of dollars. You could be sitting on gold and silver and banks of bank accounts full with all of the money but you can't buy peace. You cannot buy a six-pack of peace. You can't do it. It comes from the owner of peace, the one who created you, created his whole universe and everything in it. Do the right thing right now. Ask the one who, who created you, the maker of mankind, to guide you. And then start to do the legwork. Start to look into Islam. Start to look into it. We talked about the verbatim word of God, the Quran. Have you read it? Look into it. You've read every other fashion magazine, sports magazine, you stayed up late at night watching all the daytime, nighttime dramas, soap operas. Read this book, the Quran. Tune into the Dean Show regularly. Call us at 1-800-662-ISLAM and learn more. I'm telling you, learn more. This is a priceless blessing, a priceless gift. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. You can go ahead and follow us there, like us there. On where We started a new hashtag, Priceless Blessings. We want to get this get the momentum here so we can be more appreciated for all the blessing that the Creator has given us. So go ahead and like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and don't forget to mention that one priceless blessing that comes to your mind so we can be more grateful and thankful to the Maker of Mankind. We'll see you next time. Peace be with you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh.